What's up in there? You were on uh, a major label. I then, was for about you're... 15 minutes. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> how did uh, how did that? And, and now you're you're on an on an actual indie label now, correct? Yes, a uh, boutique label out of Austin, Texas called Weston Boys, <laughs> West On Boys, and uh, got distribution through Fontana here in the states and uh, Rass Universal and the rest of the world. <laughs> how would you compare that to your experience with the major label initially? Catering is much better at the majors. Uh, the food is better, you know, when they bring out the food and the parties. But uh, no, sincerely, it's a it's a whole different world, you know. Uh, you're you're in control of your destiny much more. Uh, there's so, still certainly market forces at work, but uh, I own my masters. I own my publishing. And, uh, you know, own, owning owning what you do, I think, is is very liberating psychologically, if nothing else. So it's it's definitely where I'll be for the remainder of my days. So you're saying you control your destiny more on an on, on an independent, yeah. Uh, with a, with a major, you know, you're 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 playing their games, going by their rules, and they're usually about 10 to 15 years behind the curve of what's actually happening. So so it's good to be out here on on your own. How did the uh, how did the opportunity with uh, True Blood come along? Uh, Alan Ball, the creator of the show, actually was a purchaser of Bad Things, the song, uh, several years ago when it first came out on the major. And uh, so when he got the was doing the treatment for the script, he uh, he remembered the song, pulled it out, gave it Digital Kitchen, said do something with this, and they just knocked it out of the park visually. So that it wound up sticking. There was some talk of maybe finding a, a different song, but I got lucky. What, what advice would you have for bands looking to license their music to, to TV shows and movies? Um, own your masters, own your publishing if at all possible, and then you know you, you got to go see music supervisors. You've got to figure out who the heck they are and get solicited material to them. You know, try and take them to take them, take them to lunch. They love free meals, so buy them lunch, drop off a CD, and you know pray for luck. But I, I really, you know, if I if I had the inside scoop, I'd have ten more placements. I've only got about four placements right now. So. I want to do bad things with you. If you could change one thing about the indie music scene, anything at all, what would you change? Um, God, I don't, I don't know. That's a tough question because that, would, that supposes that I understand what the hell's going on, which I don't. Um, but I, I do wish that there was, uh, especially in the States, a, a way to get beyond the noise. There's a lot of noise out there, a lot of static on the web that gets in the way of, of great music getting in the right people's hands. And, and I, I hope that people can uh, show a little more respect for that and, and, and pay for their music, not steal it from BitTorrent sites and, and all that jazz. But I mean, honestly, it's so in flux right now. I don't, I don't know what you can change. I think it's just going to have to evolve into whatever it's going to become. Thank you.